Alexa, you got any quail recipes for me today? Okay, for oil, I recommend Roquefort pear salad said from quail. All recipes. 30 minutes what to make. What you like? Start recipe. <laughs> Thanks for coming to check us out today here at New York Coternix. Today we are doing another video in the recipe series. We're going to be making Jamaican curry quail. It is going to be awesome. I promise you that. I'm using my own recipe. I'm going to share it with you down below and in the video. Complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how I do what I do. So stay tuned. Let's get started. All right, so for our first ingredient, of course, we have our quail. I have six quail in this bag. This is what we're going to be cooking up today. Now aside from that, I am going to be using an onion, big ass Spanish onion, put that to the side. I have a red bell pepper, I have some scotch bonnet sauce, and again folks, here's that scotch bonnet sauce. If you can't find any, you can make your own using crack cocaine and unicorn farts. Not really necessary because you can make your uh, sauce, you can make your sauce from scratch but whatever I'm about to make it up here we're about to do it up big time we're gonna have some extra flavors going on I have garlic and I have ginger now this is ginger that I chopped up and put in here with the uh, well this is ginger that I have chopped up and I reused a empty garlic container obviously and I also have mild curry sauce why mild because the rest of this stuff is kicking up the heat a bunch of notches so I always go for the mild curry sauce the hot curry sauce always seems to be overkill I'm gonna use coconut milk coconut milk is gonna help cut down on the heat and also add some texture to the dish potatoes that's right potatoes we're gonna chop these up in the you know maybe fourths get these going these also go great with the curry and go to add a little bit of flavor and mildness to the dish. Aside from that, of course, we're gonna be using some salt and pepper. I don't have to show you that. You know what that stuff looks like. Uh, also, got some habanero peppers here. We're gonna add this to the recipe to kick up the heat. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do with this recipe. So, habanero peppers. And then, then we have our baby bananas. We're going to cook this as a side dish. I'm going to get a couple of these going. We're going to fry these bad boys up, maybe even bake them. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet, but they're nice and ripe and they're ready to go. So we are going to get started with our recipe. Now I'm going to cut my onion, chop it up coarsely. It doesn't need to be uniform in any way. For this recipe I use like maybe one inch pieces so this piece will get chopped into three pieces right here and then again just coarsely chop them doesn't have to be anything too special and we're gonna clean up as we go All right, I'm going to start cutting up my potatoes too to get those out of the way. I'm going to cut them about this size. Why not? Also, I like to leave the skin on the potatoes. I think it adds a little bit of character and flavor. And this I do with pretty much any recipe, whether it be french fries or, you know, potato salad. Skin always stays on. Why well, miss out on all those nutrients? All right, and I'm going to cut up a couple of habaneros for this recipe, uh, but I'm going to make sure that I get the seeds out of these things because that's where the extra heat lies. And I just want the flavor from these habaneros. I don't want to burn my face off tonight. So we are going to cut that membrane right out of there. Pop those seeds out, make sure all of them are gone. Again, 
I just want the flavor, not so much of the heat. I mean, the heat is going to come with it, but you get those seeds involved. You're asking for trouble. I'm asking for trouble. Seeds are out of it and I'm going to chop it up. In looking at this, this one habanero should be enough to kick this whole recipe up a whole level. So I'm just going to use that one and I'm going to pair it with this bell pepper. I like to take the seeds out of here as well because they're useless pretty much as long as you're not planting them. So I'll cut that membrane right out of there. Cut right along that seam. Again, get that membrane out of there. No problem. So we have a nice clean bell pepper. And we're going to chop this up nice and fine to get that in there. All right, and with this bell pepper again, you want to dice it, get it as small as possible. You don't have to go crazy with it, but I like to get them pretty minute. So doesn't have to be minced, but you also don't want huge chunks of it. So there we have our pepper mix. I'm going to get that in a bowl. And again, folks, we're cleaning up as we go. Okay, and this recipe does call for a little ginger, so I'm gonna use eh, these two pieces to do. A little bit less than a square inch each piece. I'm gonna leave the skin on, I'm gonna mince them. Put them to the side. After a little while, you want to take your hand out of the equation, your other hand at least. Let's bring it all back together and chop back at it. Just rock back and forth. You can go fast, you can go slow, as long as you're cutting close to your last cut. Wipe your material off the knife, bring it back together, bunch it all up. Cut some more. And there's our ginger. So we're going to use this much ginger for the recipe. Uh, it's probably about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. I'm also going to use about that much garlic as well. The garlic that I have is already minced and I'll be using size about that much. I've got the ginger in here already. I'm going to grab a big fat tablespoon of some garlic, add that to the mix, a little bit of juice too, why not? As you can tell, I love the garlic. Also, was going through the fridge, found these. I'm going to go ahead and chop these up. Actually, I'm going to shave them first. I'm going to chop them up, add them to the recipe because I don't see myself using these carrots for anything else in the near future and I don't want to throw them away. So I'm going to get these carrots added to the curry. This is an excellent thing for curry carrots. They, you know, add flavor, of course. They add sustenance and we are going to add them. All right, carrot is shaved. I'm just going to chop this up real quick. I'm going to chop this up into tiny little discs it's no special way that these need to be cut up cut them up just as they've come out of the can i actually have some canned carrots in there but what am i going to use those for when i have a fresh carrot and it's cousin right here and we're going to go ahead and burn those off instead of throwing them away later on boom there we go problem solved 
And as always, people, I'm going to cut my quail right in half up the breastplate, just like that. I have six of them, so we're going to end up with 12 quail halves. Of course, you people can do the math, but I'm going to spout it out anyway. We have six pieces. I'm cutting them right up the breastplate. So I have 12 halves. Once we're all done with this, I'm going to get this seasoned up with salt and pepper. Nothing more. That's a pretty simple part of it. I'm going to get everything into the pot. We have a couple in here that actually still have the skin on from the uh, tutorials that I did prior to this. Now, if you want to check those videos out, the links are below. Definitely check those out. I have a few different ways of culling or dispatching the birds and processing as well. So we're almost done with this part. Uh, probably heard some of that screaming in the background. That's my son. He's six. He's playing Fortnite, having a good time right now. All right, there's our halves. All right, we've turned our oil on. We've got about three tablespoons, maybe four, I don't know, in this pan right now. All right, so our oil is nice and hot. We're going to get our quail in here. And right after that, what we're going to do is get our onions in here and our mixture of peppers. Really wish you guys could smell this right now. But we're going to get all this cooking. Now we don't have to brown the quail or anything before we get the onion in here. We're going to get that in here right now as a matter of fact. There goes my onion. I chopped that up coarsely. All right, so we're going to let this go for a few minutes, maybe two or three. And then we're going to add our peppers and our ginger and our onion. All right, and after about two or three minutes of the Onions getting a little bit of sautéing done. We'll go ahead and add our pepper mixture. And our ginger and garlic. We'll get that incorporated into the mix. Broke out the wooden spoon for this. Alright, so we're going to let all that go for a few minutes. Again in here. It looks like we lost the onion. We'll grab that back. So in here, we have our quail. We have the onions. We're sauteed. We have our pepper mixture. Again, that's a habanero pepper mixed with a diced bell pepper, a red one. And we have our garlic and ginger mixture. Gonna let that go for a few more minutes. All right, now about a minute and a half in is the point where I add a little bit of scotch bonnet pepper sauce. Here's the stuff right here. I'm gonna add about two or three tablespoons of this stuff. Don't wanna overkill. A Little bit of that stuff goes a long way and it smells really good. Just mix it right in there. And then we're going to add the curry. Now, I never measure the curry. I always eyeball the curry. So here we go with this. I'm just going to make it rain. All in all, I'm thinking I'm probably using about three or four tablespoons of curry. Maybe. I'm not quite sure. Either way, we're going to mix that in there. Make sure we get a nice yellow color. And a note on that scotch bonnet pepper sauce. 
that can be used to taste as well i mean there's no specific amount of that that you have to use uh depends on your palate so have at it okay and once your quail is a nice golden brown and you're absolutely sure that you should not touch your face you're going to go ahead and add your potatoes i'm adding I'm going to use half the potatoes that I cut up here for now. See how this goes because it looks like I'm not going to have enough space for all of them. I'm going to add the carrots. Mix that around a little bit. Now you know what? I might have room for the rest of these potatoes. Why not? At least some of them. I'll get them all in there. So with this, we may have to add a little bit more of the curry. I'm going to mix this up. Turn the heat back up. Let it simmer a little bit. Now with coconut milk, it sometimes will settle inside of the can. Gross. You could take a chopstick mix it up or have the foresight to actually shake it up in the can before you open it that would be your best bet people shake your coconut milk up in the can before you open it people i'm gonna go ahead and add this whole can to the mix And that'll break down in there, thicken up the sauce. Again, it's better to shake it up before hand, but if anything, it's okay if you have to go ahead and stir it up with a fork or chopstick. Butter knife will work really good too. So we have all of our ingredients stirred up in there. I'm going to get this covered up. I have this on medium heat right now, well, medium low, and I'm going to leave it right there, covered up. I'll leave it there for about 35 minutes. And just because I'm leaving it there for 35 minutes doesn't mean that we're not going to check on it periodically because it is going to need to be stirred, tended to, of course. So make sure you do that. All right, so after it's been in here for a little while, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of the rice wine vinegar. I'm going to add like a half a teaspoon. All right, and for our dessert, we're going to take a couple of these bananas, these baby bananas. Gonna peel those. All right, so the softer they are, the riper they are. The riper they are, the sweeter they are. The sweeter they are, the better they taste. You know how that goes. Sometimes they could be a little too soft, but we can work with them. All right, so we're gonna take these, have some pure maple syrup. I'm just gonna brush it all over them and put them into a Pyrex and into the broiler on low. So again, we're just gonna glaze them with the syrup, pure maple syrup both sides, make sure we get a complete cover. And 
and once we have our baby bananas covered in syrup I'm going to put them in Pyrex and again broil them on low and that should take about three minutes this goes in again on low broil three minutes or so all right so there's our final product Jamaican curry quail with baby bananas enjoy Thank you once again for coming to check us out here today at New York Eternix. If you have any questions or comments or want to share one of your own recipes, please feel free to do so right down below in the comments section. And uh, also leave a like for the video, subscribe to the channel for more. I'm always coming back with more videos. Hit that notification bell so you're notified anytime I drop a new video on the channel. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you again from New York Eternix.